On this episode of Transit Unplugged TV, we come to you from Orlando, Florida, and the American Public Transportation Association's annual expo where thousands of people come from around America to learn about the latest transit trends and interact on the trade show floor. We held numerous events at our booth, including a live CEO roundtable with five of the most powerful women in transit, plus interviews with Peter Axel and Teresa Domingo and others, all on this episode of Transit Unplugged TV. So let's get our team announced and we'll welcome everybody. First off, we start down here at the end, Nadine Lee, the new CEO of Dallas Dart. <laughs> Leslie Richards, CEO of SEPTA in Philadelphia. And then my good friend, Bakara Malden, who's chief of staff in Memphis, Tennessee, with my buddy, Gary. And my career counselor, Lauren Skyver, CEO of Sunline Transit in Coachella Valley, Southern California. And then my great friend, MJ Maynard, CEO, and she runs everything in Las Vegas. Actually, she actually used to run the Hard Rock while she was there before she came here. So MJ is CEO officially of the Regional Transportation Commission of Southern Nevada, which does a lot more than transit, which we're going to find out about. So thank you, ladies, for being here. So excited to have you. So we're at APTA Expo 2021. It's the first expo that they've had in four years. We had to skip a year because of COVID. Um, as you guys know, the Vontis and Trapeze folks were here. We had a bunch of events at our booth, and this show is the biggest one in North America that happens. I mean, there's, there, this floor, this trade show floor is uh, massive. It would take you probably 20 minutes to walk the whole thing and go down every aisle. I've been able to see a lot of the manufacturers. We've got great, like these brand new kind of uh, vehicle trains here. It's just uh, amazing the stuff that's out in the industry this year. Lots of technology. The vehicles are improving their quality. There was probably about 8,000 people here at this show um, and a little less than previous years because of COVID, but uh, it still was phenomenal. Quality time with a lot of the leaders of our industry and the suppliers, and that's what the expo is really about. There's lots of training going on as well at the conference, but the expo is about trans agencies being able to kind of see what's on the market right now. We want to have the best technology, the best vehicles, the best services for our customers, the passengers. And that's what all this is about, letting them know the latest and greatest happening in the industry. Tell me, what's your favorite part of the job of being a CEO and your least favorite? MJ? I have a lot of favorites. Good. Well, I mean, certainly uh, the opportunity to work with the team, the RTC that I, that I work with is, is really one of my favorite parts. They are bold, uh, they are fearless, they pivot quickly, uh, really smart, so super lucky, because obviously, I may sit at the top of the org chart, but the organization is what it is, not because of me, but because of them. So uh, they're amazing. And I think, honestly, I think it's serving the public. Uh, as as uh, Paul mentioned, I, I came from the private sector. Uh, I, I stumbled onto transit about 15 years ago just by a chance conversation with a then general manager who I think sometimes when the moon, the stars, and the sun all aligns, uh, you get an opportunity to to make some uh, decisions that b based on timing, luck, and hard work, least. Um, You're good at the politics. That's a big part of it. Yeah. That, well, so any board members? I love working <laughs> for. I love working for an elected board. Yeah. <laughs> I love I it. I knew we wouldn't get to the truth. <laughs> the politics of things and uh, working with 253 bosses, which are the legislature in wow. uh, oh, yeah. in Pennsylvania. Uh, so I learned a lot. And, uh, and then also with the Turnpike, which, where I served with the chair of the SEPTA board. And that's how we uh, became uh, colleagues, I would say. And uh, then when uh, the opportunity uh, to come over to SEPTA uh, came, uh, it was very intriguing because I always enjoyed working on equity issues. You ask what I like the most. And when you can really influence, right, an industry. In fact, a few people came up to me here today at the expo. And they said, we remember when you were um, at AASHTO, which is the, DO, the APTA of, uh, of DOTs. They said, remember you gave a speech that was called the 12 free things you could do to improve diversity. Because I kept hearing that people couldn't afford it. And every time I said, we all have to work on diversity and uh, making sure that there are diverse perspectives at high levels at all of our agencies, I just kept hearing, we don't have the resources, we can't. And uh, one of the things I said is, uh, I'll never take a meeting with a private consulting firm if they don't also bring women along. Woo! And the women have to speak <laughs> at the meeting, right? Yes. 
And I actually forgot I said that. That was about seven years ago. It seems like a lifetime ago. And uh, there are a lot of people here that reminded me today. And uh, now in Pennsylvania, that is a rule. So my favorite things are really just knowing that everything that we do, if we make all the right decisions, we can actually help a lot of people who really need us. That's, that's kind of my, my brand, my personal drive, my personal mission of why I'm in transportation, transit in general. That's what I do and that's what I care about. The thing that I hate the most, um, and I'll just be honest with you, if I have to work late and I miss my ballet class, I get very <laughs> upset. You take ballet? I take ballet, wow. and I'm very dedicated, and ballet is my release. It is the thing that I go to do just to decompress, and That's so when awesome. I miss it, I get really mad. Yeah. <laughs> that That's sounds great. like a TV show for us. Yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> CEOs in ballet used to ride Harley Davidson. And our, all right, Lawrence Skyver. So my favorite part of what I do is people. We're a people business. We move people, and we need people to do it. I think um, I love being able to be in a room and not just be looking at those that are superstars, but seeing the ones that have quiet talent, that aren't always raising their hand, but always delivering something to our organization. I think that's my favorite part, is seeing talent and seeing passion in people that comes in all different forms and all different ways of communication. I think my least favorite part of the job is saying no. Um, my motto is it starts with yes. And sometimes I have to say no, and um, I'm getting never used to it. Um, my thing is, let's see how we can get to yes versus saying no. Um, and those are my two pol polar ends. Well, in, in general, I love having the ability to impact what happens within a community. Um, I'm a community servant. I guess just intuitively. My, my mother didn't believe in babysitters, so she would take me with her to all the community meetings that she used to go to. So it was just natural that I ended up in a profession that allowed me to work with the community. And so that's why I really, really have relished the opportunity to serve the people, to work in public agencies. You know, sometimes we have to make as leaders decisions that aren't easy. And those decisions impact, you know, it's not just one employee, it's that employee, their children, their family, whatever. And, and as leaders in the transit industry over the last few months with COVID, we've had to face some difficult decisions. And so that's, I think that's my least favorite part of the job. That's good. Thank you for being, that's, I, I agree with you. HR stuff, all that, all the issues we've had to do, that's great. Isn't that a great, great feedback and all that? Wonderful. One of the fun parts of this event was the opportunity to meet the GM. In this interview with Teresa Domingo, the general manager of Trapeze Group, we talked to her about her background and career, about the company itself, recent change it's undergoing, and where it's headed in the future. Take a to listen. Oversee. What is your like day-to-day -day job? What do you do as general manager? Yeah, so basically my responsibilities involve leading a cross-functional team to drive the business forward, set strategy, uh, shape uh, productive and positive work environment, culture, and so on. And I, I have a great team of leaders that support me in doing that. So I, I honestly think of it as we do it, not just me. And, and each day is different. Um, and what I really love about my, my role as general manager is not only being able to help advance our company forward, but also the people development side. So growing more leaders to do amazing things in the industry. So this last year, Trapeze went through... Um a, um, what would you call that? Uh, With Vontis. Yeah, yeah. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. So Trapeze, we're focused on um, building, developing, sorry, developing, delivering, and supporting um, public transportation software solutions. We realigned earlier this year where Trapeze is now focused solely on the back office side of the business, so back office solutions, and Vontis is focused on the in-vehicle and yard management solutions. So we're focused in separate areas to, to drive uh, business forward more aggressively. Um, and both brands, so both Trapeze and Vontis are a part of the overarching Medaxo company, which is a global collection of technology companies really working to support the movement of people across the world. Actually, a fun fact, Paul, I learned the other day that um, all the 14 brands across Medaxo move 350 million people per day. So that's pretty impressive. One of the cool things they've all mentioned is the ability to make a difference in their community. So the question I have for them now is what's the most exciting project 
that you're working on now. And I'm going to start at the end and just come right down. So, Nadine, what's the most exciting project you're working on right now at DART? Okay, I'm, I'm going to take the liberty to tell you about two of the most exciting things. All at right, Dart. of course. <laughs> uh, because I can. Um, so <laughs> the first thing is Dart Zoom, which is a complete restructure of our bus network, which is launching on January 24th. Uh, as I tell our staff at Dart, uh, we're planning a wedding. We want it to be perfect uh, on launch day, but the whole idea here is that we're restructuring the bus network so that we can actually serve people better, uh, serve, serve people better than we have in the past. We think we're, we've captured the right market, we've got the right uh, network structure, we've got the right, the right service levels, and if we really do our job right and continue to build on that, we will completely change the way people move in the Dallas-Fort Worth region, which is super exciting. The second thing I'll talk about is that we're, we, uh, me and the staff and the board are working on a rider experience vision and philosophy that will ultimately become a roadmap for us to um, figure out what investments we need to make to improve the rider experience. And the whole concept behind this is that we need to make a commitment to our riders on how we want them to experience their journeys. And that's not rocket science, but I think um, if we do that, we can actually uh, we can actually tell our riders what we're going to do, and then they can hold us accountable to it. So we, in the middle of the pandemic, did a really uh, bold strategic plan which includes a bus network redesign, reimagining our regional rail and entire wayfinding and signage. So people look at our system as a system and not just as a, I'm a bus rider, I'm a subway rider, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a train uh, rider. And so that is really going to change SEPTA and how people use our system and the type of service that we can provide. It's really hard to just identify one. This is an amazing time to be in transit in Memphis. There's just so much going on. Uh, we recently introduced a new microtransit program called Ready. Uh, as I alluded to, it's breaking all kinds of ridership records. But the, the important thing about that is we are changing the dialogue around mobility within the Memphis region. We're giving people options that they've not had before. And that, of course, presents itself a its set of challenges as well because we are having to educate the public on how to use microtransit, what microtransit is, but we are getting overwhelmingly great response to it. So much so that we're expanding to additional uh, zones as well. We're bringing on new technology that's gonna help fuel that even more. Uh, we've got a new next generation fare payment system that is not only going to join us in changing the dialogue around physically how we move around, but how we pay for it. What can we pay for using our, our fare passes? And so it's, it's just really exciting, and that's just a short snippet of what to see from Memphis in the future. All right, Lauren, you got so many things happening, but come on, pick one or two for me. So I've got to narrow it down. Um, the first that comes to mind is Sunline's building the first zero emission and renewable energy trades school on its property. How about um, that, so huh? We, yeah, I've been there. It's awesome. So we are building the West Coast Center of Excellence, which will all be focused on training for our technicians and, and staff on how zero emission technology works and what's happening in renewable energy. Um, and I think that trade schools have to come back. Um, we do value uh, college education, but for equity, we have to have other pathways for new employees and people that want to get into transit to enter into our workforce. And we feel very strongly about that. So we are um, working on a, a bus rapid transit project in a very busy corridor in uh, Las Vegas on Maryland Parkway. Uh, we are knee deep in uh, implementing a autonomous vehicle shuttle. It's a program, not a pilot. It's a program in downtown Las Vegas. We are also, as a traffic manager, we are going to take our adaptive signal control technology, which helps congestion moves cars along more quickly. And we're really we're going to be big and bold and try that in, on the Las Vegas Strip. If you've been to Las Vegas Strip, it's a it's a beast uh, to move around. And then we're introducing a microtransit pilot. But I think. We're taking a different approach. It's sort of our, our love all, serve all model. So this universal model where we are not, we're not, we're, we're not going to put somebody that's a paratransit customer and, and carve them out and put them in a small bus. So this on-demand vehicle will pick up fixed truck customers on demand at their home within 30 minutes. We'll take them wherever they need to go in this 32-mile square zone or we'll connect them to our transit service. On that same bus, we'll pick up a paratransit customer that uh, 
from their home within 30 minutes and then take them anywhere they need to go in the, in the Las Vegas Valley. And then we're, we're working with our school district because uh, everyone's short, driver shortage is a real thing, especially in the school district. So now we're picking up high school students at home and taking them to, uh, to high school and then back. So it, again, it's, we, I think we've done a disservice to folks that are uh, from the disabled community. We, we sort of put a, this, we, this stigma on them and say, you're all in the small bus. And then everybody else is on the fixed route bus. Well, we, we again are taking this universal love all, serve all approach, and it's enhanced the customer experience. Uh, it's been very, very efficient. We're, we're stretching that tax dollar. Peter Axel is general manager of Vontis, a transit technology group with a manufacturing facility. I got the opportunity to talk to him about his background and career, the company itself, how it got started this last year, and where it's going. Today we're going to get to know you a little bit, Peter. Is that all right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, all right. So Vontis is a brand new company, but it's been around for a while. Tell us about what's going on there. Correct. Absolutely. So Vontis is a company launched in April of 2021 when we had a realignment with Trapeze and created our own company fully focused on the ITS solutions inside our group offering, meaning we are really focused on our CAD AVL solutions, infotainment solutions, vehicle intelligence, as well as yard management software and hardware and our payment ticketing solutions. So we provide for in those areas hardware and software solutions to our customers. As a general manager of a company like Vontis, which has kind of a deep uh, bench of high, you know, high capacity talent, but you're still kind of like a startup, the spirit of startup. What do you do day to day? I mean, what's your job like as general manager? So my job is really, I have two areas that I focus on. One is my biggest responsibility is to enable our team, enable our talent to do their job, which is to make our customers successful in their day-to-day -day operations. So I, I really work with our operations and technical and customer support teams, and my role in that is removing roadblocks. So if we have issues with vendors and partners, if we have internal issues of approvals, it's, uh, I tell my guys, use me as kind of a, uh, you know, a hammer to punch through walls when we get into trouble and to understand how we support our customers best. And the other part is looking forward. Really, what, as I said, we want to be focused on innovation and I'll, the other part of my day goes into what do we want our offerings to the transit industry look two years, three years, five years down the road. So we just launched uh, last month our new product initiative group where we put some of our best technical talent uh, with that focus. We're ring fencing them off on the day-to-day -day, uh, noise of operations to really focus on what new products could we bring to the market or should we bring to the market and invest in that will enable our customers to be successful two years, five years, ten years from now. Because as we, as we know, our environments are changing Changing, the traveling public is changing, and we have to be able to adapt. Where do you see the industry going, Peter? We just we just came out of COVID. I think we're on the way out. Hopefully, it looks like across the country and in and in Canada, um, transit agencies are shifting their services. They've got these big tranches of funds here in the U.S. The three big uh, tranches, and then this new infrastructure package. Where do you see us going? In the short term, we'll be going to people coming back into transit, right? I think it's going to be a different environment uh, for commuter transit and uh, and regular transit uh, from a way as people come back, as you see, say, fixed routes are going to change. Uh, mobility on demand, and then it goes into you know mobility as a service and integrated mobility. I do believe that transit agencies, just like ride providers, are going to have to work together and, and integrate their solutions, because at the end, people aren't going to care whether it's now, am I taking the public, public transit bus, uh, uh, Uber-type service, uh, a, a bike share, whatever, right? I really don't care. I need to be enabled to go from A to B. That's what matters to me, and I think where our role comes in is really enabling public transit agencies to support that. This is a model that is, I think, fairly new to our industry, that we're all still learning, and we want to be enablers in that journey for our, for our customers. Let's flip a little bit, and I'd like you to give me maybe some advice that you have for a young person or a young woman, maybe, who wants to move up in her career in transit. Don't let the fear of the unknown guide your decision making. Uh, and I also, uh, and I didn't, I didn't make this up, we use this as sort of our, our North Star at the RTC. Without facts and data, you're just another person with an opinion. So know your stuff, be curious, learn every single day, and I'd say find mentors, and, because they're not necessarily going to come to you. S uh, seek, seek out folks, uh, men and women, that will give you advice and keep you in check. 
uh, call you out when you need it, and, uh, and just believe in yourself. Understand who you are as a whole person and bring that whole person to work. If it's music, if it's humor, if it's religion, whatever, there, that's all a part of who you are in your quality world. And your quality world matters in us solving problems and delivering good service and being tolerant of each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. The more we stop talking about what our quality worlds really are and understanding that it's okay to know people beyond their resume, the better we will get as teams, mm -hmm. the more effective we will get to support each other, and the happier our employees will be at the workplace. You can't be afraid to go out and to network. Yeah. Networking is so important. When I first started working with this organization, with APTA, I used to challenge myself to just go up and talk to five people that I didn't even know. And then five would then turn into 10, and then 10 would turn into 20. And next thing you know, you know everyone in the room. I got a great piece of advice. When I was an elected official, and I was the only female um, on, uh, at this level, and uh, there was a prison break. So the guys that I served with were talking about prison reform and, and um, officers and you know, security. And I had never really dealt in this issue before, so I just didn't say anything. And a reporter came up to me afterwards and said, don't you realize every time you speak, you have a voice that no one's ever heard from because we've never had a female in this role before and we've never heard it through your eyes. So, That's good. So even if it's the same thing, it's, it's okay to repeat something in your own voice because it will come across differently and it will re resonate with people differently. I spent so many years of my career thinking about how I should be like somebody else only to realize later that you know, I'm okay with who I am, you know, and, and actually who I am is what makes me, you know, makes me contribute in a different way and makes me more successful. So I can't be like somebody else. And then the other thing I would say is don't overthink things and don't look back because people ask me all the time, what would, you know, if you could change something about your career path, what would it be? And I always tell them I would change nothing because if I changed even one thing, I wouldn't be exactly where I am right now. And so don't overthink it. Don't look back. You know, if you're going to learn a lesson, um, then learn it fast and move on. The last main question I want to ask you is, what new technology is exciting you right now? Just using artificial intelligence and predictive analytics uh, to improve uh, safety and congestion and response time and avoidance of primary crashes on our highway system. It's, uh, it's fascinating and it's, I think, uh, as someone that it was very near and dear to my heart, my previous CEO, Tina Kluge used to say that technology is the new asphalt, and, and that's that's very true. I like to say uh, Sunline is a technology company that provides a transit system. So we have to start thinking of ourselves that way um, because we employ so many systems and we have so much that we have to monitor. We also have to understand that all the data that we're collecting that is no longer relevant, which is a big job. And then the other is, um, as you heard me talking about building this school, we believe for every investment in technology, transit has to make an investment in training, and we're not good at that. We typically train people by training one person with privilege or gets to go, and that person has to train everyone else in our organization. We have to start prioritizing training and access to training for all of our employees. Predictive analytics that relate to communications that helps us to target our marketing. I think overall as an industry, we don't tell our story. Our stories get told by the people that have problems with the services that we're providing. And those predictive analytics allow us to do targeted marketing so that we can tell our story in the right way to the right people. And so I'm excited about the opportunity that we're gonna have in Memphis to tell them about all of those wonderful and exciting things that we have coming down the pipe. Mobile ticketing, you know, being able uh, just to hop on and, and go from mode to mode, but also once you're on the system, making it easier to use so you feel safe and you're secure, you know where you're going, you know where you need to go, and know that you're not gonna get lost because that is, that is definitely uh, an issue on a big legacy system um, like ours. And then also um, just to connecting everybody Everybody, making everybody aware of their surroundings and let's keep each other safe as a community so we have a transit watch app I know a lot of transit agencies have that now if you see something unusual if you're not sure what you're seeing you know report it you can report it discreetly and that way you can keep everybody safe and um, those who are trained um, 
whether you have transit police or whether you have security uh, available to you, they can then come and, and take care of the situation. I'm really excited about the prospect of a bus driving down the lane and cars giving, away, giving way automatically to that bus to create the virtual bus lane and give, give that bus priority. I know this was already being studied and researched in Singapore at least a couple of years ago. I'm not sure where that technology is yet, but, um, but I know it's the future and I know it's going to happen. And when it comes, I'm ready to take advantage of it. There you go. <laughs> That's exciting. What do you think, huh? What a great panel. Today's episode brought you insights from five of the most powerful women in transit and hope you were inspired and enjoyed their personal stories as well. Hearing from some of the technology leaders that empower the public transit industry was also very informative. And hope you enjoyed this special episode of Transit Unplugged TV as we bring you insights and inside information about what's happening in and around the public transit industry all every month on Transit Unplugged TV.